Chapter 20. It's probably safe to assume you don't get invited to a lot of parties. My feet slipped on the ice and I fell to the ground. I watched as a man jumped inside the van. There were the sounds of a brief struggle and then the man came back out holding the phone Juanita had just shown us a moment before. It was Pajama Man, the same one who had confronted Benny and me in front of our school. He wore the same stocking cap he'd had on when we saw him at school. He was tall and thin with dark eyes that sat under fat and furry eyebrows. He wore heavy black boots and a thick coat. Juanita squatted just inside the van. Benny came out the side door. He looked like he was ready for a fight. I don't think either one of them realized how much trouble we were in. The henchman pushed a few buttons on the phone and then slipped it into his pocket. So, what kind of critters have infested my van? My hand edged toward the phone in my pocket. Come, come, my dear, the man motioned to Juanita through the back door. It must be stuffy in there. Feel free to step out into the fragrant night air. The man spread out his hands and smiled. I would introduce myself, but I think I prefer my anami. I decided to press my luck. You don't need to introduce yourself, Charles. The man spun around to face me, his eyes becoming thin slits. Where did you, how much do you know, boy? I said nothing. Let him wonder how much I knew. This was especially good tactic, since the sad truth was, I knew next to nothing. Well, it doesn't matter, Charles said, waving his hand. He turned to face Juanita. Please, step outside. I put my hand in my pocket and grasped my phone. I tried to look casual. Charles stood there, his arms folded, with a I hate you smile on his face. It sounds like you three have been doing your homework. You've discovered something about our little family, have you? That's too bad. People don't live very long once you meet the Joneses. Juanita looked surprised, but she recovered almost immediately. Your family sounds like a cherry bunch, she said, climbing out of the van. It's probably safe to assume you don't get invited to a lot of parties. Pass me your phones, Charles said, snapping his fingers. In an instant, my brain formulated a plan. There were three of us. He couldn't catch all of us at once. Run, I shouted, pulling the phone out of my pocket. Run and call for help. It was a good plan. It should have worked. Only it didn't. One moment I was running, moving away from the van. The next moment I wasn't moving at all. A brief moment of disorientation and then nothing. Looking down at my feet, I realized I was 12 inches off the ground. I was flying. <laughs>